Hello and welcome to the course introduction on USB architecture part two. My name is Pamela Frenzy and I will be your instructor. During this presentation, we are going to go through the outline, the modules that are within part two. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to use the question and comment section. Let's go over a course description. Basically, we're going to provide more detailed coverings of the low, full, and high-speed environments. We'll look at those environments in a little bit more detail than we did in Module 1. We'll also look at the encoding and the electrical environment, including the differential signaling that's used in USB 2.0. We'll also look at configuration in more detail. We'll look at the requests. We'll look at evaluating device requests. We'll look at the descriptors and how those work. And we'll also look at the new supplement to USB 2.0, the on-the-go protocol. One of the objectives in USB 2.0 is to look at the architecture of USB and the components that make up USB. You should have a full understanding of the operation at the three speeds in USB and you should be able to understand and describe the electrical signaling requirements for all three speeds, 1.5, 12, and 480 megabit per second operation in USB. You should be able to describe hubs, you should understand power management and the levels of power management and how power management is handled in USB. And you should understand split transactions. Split transactions are how USB dif differentiates low and full speed data on the high speed bus without slowing the high speed bus down. We'll look at the configuration requirements. And you should be able to understand the different transaction types in USB and the different device classes. As far as prerequisite goes, it's always a good idea to have an understanding of PCI hard or PC hardware and software architecture and the PCI bus. That does help. It's not necessary, but it does help. You also it helps if you have a good understanding of serial communication techniques, but again, not a requirement. It just does help understand USB. Let's look at the topics. We will look at USB hub requirements. We will look at the low and high speed environment. We will look at low and full speed transfers. We will look at the high speed overview. High-speed transfers will be covered. Also ne necessary are split transactions, and we will cover split transactions in detail so that you'll understand how full and low-speed devices operate on a high-speed bus without slowing down the high-speed data. We'll look at a configuration overview and how configuration is handled in USB. We also will go over device descriptors and we'll look at device states, how those are used in the configuration and communication in USB. Hubs have to be configured just like devices do, and we'll look at hub configuration. We'll cover the on-the-go specification, and we'll look at the on-the-go protocol. So we'll break on-the-go up into two separate sections, look at the big picture, and then look at the details of on-the-go. If you have any questions, please use the question and comment box. So let's go ahead and get started in USB part two.